Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Diego, I'm the Imperial College graduate working in the heart of London. On this channel I make videos on life, entrepreneurship and my journey into medicine. Today I'm going to be sharing my 10 life lessons that I learned in 2020. All life lessons are going to be timestamped below. So let's get straight into it. So lesson number one. The first lesson I learned this year was really realizing that I have more than enough. Okay. And of course, in general, I'm very grateful and thankful for everything that I have. But this year, you know, a lot of things changed and we saw a lot of unfortunate lives lost this year, jobs lost, uh, economic catastrophe around the world, amongst other things. And in this year, I think in some way I was sort of granted the opportunity, at least that's the way I'm taking it, to really reconsider and reassess the simpler things in my life that perhaps I had not considered to be as important in recent times. You know, as time passes, you bring all of these other things into your life, which at some point may seem essential. However, it really comes down to times like this when these things are sort of removed from you and they're no longer available, as for many that was the case during lockdown. So for me, in this year of 2020, despite experiencing a rocky start to having to adjust to all of these new conditions, these new ways of living, I was really actually able to begin to appreciate the simpler things. And I also realized that these simpler things actually made me happy. I was happy with what I had, perhaps for some, you know, it can be little, for others it can be a lot, because of course this is all relative. But for me, I really learned to be happy with what I had and to really just trust the process and trust what's going on at the moment. And being able to finish the year with a life, with a job, I count my blessings and I think that that really is enough for me. So the second lesson I learned this year was really that a little trust goes a long way. Now, in general, I consider myself to be quite confident and pretty well-rounded. However, what I have realized is that in past years, there has been an element of distrust sort of gaining in some areas of my life and relating to some of my capabilities and knowledge. Now, I attribute this to some factors and some of these factors are, for instance, as you grow older, there are some perceived risks, or I guess the perceived risk of failing tends to be higher, you know, if you have family, if you have dependents, if you have any of these other things, um, it tends to magnify the event of failure or the event of you not getting that job, not getting that place at the university you want. Now, another thing is also looking back to past experiences. I found myself at times doubting myself mainly due to these two things. Now, upon reflection, this is pretty bad to have. And the reason why is that, you know, these sort of thoughts and this sort of way of thinking can actually be quite cyclical and it can actually be quite reinforced by the, the same thought. You know, negative thoughts breed negative thoughts and so on. And what I realized was that not only is it a loss in time, because, you know, if you've been preparing for an exam for several months, only to then fail because you're doubting yourself, it's a loss of time, it's a loss of resources, but it's also a loss of potential, you know, and sometimes just thinking positively, thinking positively about yourself, about the progress you're making and trusting yourself a bit more can make a lot of difference. And I actually found that to be the case towards the end of the year where I actually began to change the way I was looking at myself and the way I was thinking of my progress and also just learning to trust myself a bit more. And when I actually sat an exam I had sat prior, one of the main differences wasn't necessarily the amount of preparation I had, it was actually the mindset shift that I did have. And it was that mindset shift that really allowed me to excel, to feel confident and to actually feel relieved of all of these sort of burdens and baggage that I had going into these exams and just going into any other setting really where I was sort of doubting myself. So going into the new year, I want to encourage you to think more positively and look at progress as a gradual process that is organic, that takes time. And you need to be kind to yourself in that period so that you can allow yourself to grow as you're meant to grow organically and not allow all of these external pressures to make you feel down, to make you quit on your goals, to make you feel that you're not sufficient or you're not capable. Honestly, 
a little trust goes a long way and I found that to be the case many times towards the latter portion of this year and I really wish I had done this before however going into 2021 I'm definitely going to make sure to do that Now that provides a perfect segue into lesson number three. Progress is progress no matter how little or big the steps you're taking are. And it's really important that you celebrate these steps where at least you acknowledge that you're making some progress. Now at times we can place unhealthy expectations on ourselves only to fall short of them and then feel down about it. Maybe your goal is to reach 100k subscribers on YouTube to get into that dream medical school, dream university, to get that job that you've been looking for, get on that graduate scheme, whatever it may be. The issue really isn't with the dream or the objective that you're pursuing, but the issue really sometimes can be with the way you conceptualize progress. The way I like to look at things and the way that I've really learned to look at things, especially in 2020, is to look at progress as small blocks. And as long as I know that I'm making small progress, I still count it as progress. And I still know that I'm well on my way to achieving my goal. So what I would say and what I would recommend and encourage you is that this year, conceptualize progress as something which is more broken down into smaller portions. And as long as you know that you're making small steps and you're taking the steps, you've created an action plan that leads you in some way to the objective that you're seeking, then that's fine, it's still progress. Sometimes people can view slow progress as no progress and they grow frustrated and they quit. This year I've learned that progress is a gradual process that takes time and it's organic. It's something that will allow you to develop the skills, the tools, the capabilities that you need to tackle the challenges when you face them and also not to quit. Viewing progress in this way is a much more sustainable and healthy way of achieving your goals. And that's another lesson I'm going to be taking into 2021. Lesson number four is realizing that it's the journey that counts. Yes, we've probably heard this many times, but really in 2020 for me, this was something that I really came to terms with and I really applied in the way that I view my life and the way that I view all of the things that I'm aspiring to. There's a quote by Ursula K. Le Guin, an American fiction writer, which reads something like, it is good to have an end to the journey toward, but it is the journey that matters in the end. This quote in many ways emphasizes the lesson I've taken in this year, which is that while we find ourselves pursuing many things in our lives, which we consider to be the ultimate goal or the ultimate objective, it really is the moments that we're able to spend with our loved ones. It is the lessons that we learn. It is every experience that we learn. These are really what matter in the end. Yes, reaching the objective is good and perhaps it will bring you satisfaction. However, life is happening right now it happened yesterday, it's happening today, and it will happen tomorrow. And you really need to savor every moment as much as you can. And remember, life is not a race. You're not competing with anyone. It really is your life, and you really need to make the most out of it and savor every moment. And that's another lesson I'll be taking into 2021. Lesson number five. Another lesson that I learned was the power of creativity. I remember reading an article some time ago where the author described the creative process as an art form that encapsulated three phases. The first was chaos, the second was concept, and the third was creation. Now going from the chaos aspect of the creative process to the concept aspect, when you start to really build it and then to actually make those ideas come into life and bring it into creation, it really is an art form and it's something very unique to creators and it's also very personal to the actual creator, to the designer, to the person who's bringing forward this idea, these thoughts into life. And the very fact that this is a unique skill and that it's very personal to the creator, that provides power and it also links very well with one of the other lessons that I'm going to be talking about in this video which relates to the unfair advantage and in this case, a competitive advantage. Over the years, I've had many projects. Some have failed, some have been more successful, but by and large, the most successful one to date is the British Latino Network. Now, the concept behind the British Latino Network went under several iterations, and it was at the point of chaos and concept development where a lot of time was invested in. However, when all of these ideas and thoughts went from concept to creation, it made sense and it resonated with the community and a lot of the people who follow us now. 
Now naturally, when you bring a new concept, people replicate or at least develop ideas based on some aspects of what you've brought to life. Now something that has always allowed me to sort of stay one step ahead with the British Latino Network, despite other people, other organisations beginning to develop something similar, is that the British Latino Network and the whole idea behind it was something that was very unique and personal to me, the creator. And this allows me to drive the project in a unique way and in a unique direction to others because it's unique to me. Lesson number six. Lesson number six is really just to do it. Just start. Just start that business opportunity, start that YouTube channel, start that job, whatever it is, just do it. For me this year, this year has really highlighted the importance for me of just starting, just doing that thing and looking at how it opens up business opportunities and opportunities that doors that you'd never thought were there. For instance, in my case this year, I began a podcast and to finish the year it was really successful. I was able to interview and speak to people that I admired, that were leaders in their professions, in their fields, and it opened up opportunity for business opportunities, further discussion, and also friendships. Also for some of the other projects that I had had, it also opened up networking opportunities. I was featured on the newspaper, and I was even invited to speak on TV. And you know, to think about it, these opportunities would have never arisen if I had never started with the project that I had initially thought about. And going into 2021, I just want to encourage you to really start and bring these ideas that you have into life, remain consistent, be positive, and you will see all of the opportunities that it will open up. And some of them perhaps you would have never even thought about. Lesson number seven. Now lesson number seven is one of my favorites and it is the unfair advantage. Some of you may have actually heard about this idea and this concept through other channels, other YouTubers, any YouTuber who's really into personal growth, entrepreneurship, productivity, you would have heard about this principle. I first heard about this principle actually on Ali Abdal's YouTube channel. However, you'll be able to see this concept in Ash Ali and Hassan Kuba's book, which I'll put up here, which is called The Unfair Advantage. Now, the idea behind this concept of the unfair advantage is that we all knowingly or unknowingly have one specific skill or a set of skills that separate us from the others. And essentially, the idea behind the concept of the unfair advantage is that we all have a skill, a talent, uh, perhaps even knowledge or something that separates us from others. It's our own unfair advantage, it's our advantage that separates us from others and allows us to be more competitive, to be more outstanding in a particular field. This is really important as well because sometimes we can neglect our skill sets and we can forget about what we actually bring to the table because sometimes we can become so clouded by our view of what others have and what the skill sets they may bring. And this can lead you to underappreciate what you actually bring. So going into 2021, identify what your unfair advantage is. What do you have that others don't have? Or perhaps that they do have, but you know you've got that advantage. You know that you've developed it like no one else. You know that it's something that is pretty niche to what you have. Now it doesn't have to be niche, but it is something specific to what you have something specific to your personality, something specific to who you are. And once you identify it, apply it. Because only once you identify it, the only way you can now fulfill its potential is that you need to apply this unfair advantage. So that is lesson number seven. So lesson number eight. The eighth lesson I learned in 2020 was really understanding the power of compounding. Now, while it's debated whether Albert Einstein actually said that it was the most powerful force in the universe, its real-world application really is undeniable. And its effect was really summarized very nicely by Benjamin Franklin when he said, money makes money, and money that makes money makes money. Now, in different walks of life, compounding interest or the power of compounding can be seen. However, in finance, it's most markedly seen by compounding interest, the principle of compounding interest. Now, what does this mean? In simple terms, compound interest means that you gain interest on interest you've received, which multiplies your money at an accelerating rate. For example, if you have 500 pounds and you gain 10% interest on those 500, you now end up with 550. 
If you get 10% interest on those 550, you now have 605 pounds and so on. And so eventually you will end up with a number much larger than the original 500 pounds that you invested. Now, if you think about it, that really is incredible and it very much highlights the importance and the value of compounding and how investing small amounts of money over a long period of time really yields benefits. So that's my lesson number eight. Now, lesson number nine. Lesson number nine is to treat yourself like you're someone you're responsible for helping. I came across this principle in Jordan Peterson's book, which is called 12 Rules for Life, which I've put up here. The idea behind this concept is that we understand our thoughts completely and we understand them better than anyone who observes us. And because of that, because we understand our thoughts, this leads us to not want to help us. We believe that we're not worthy of help and that no one but you has more reason to see you as pathetic. And because of this, what we do is that sometimes we can withhold good things from us in a way to sort of punish ourselves. Now, Peterson argues that you need to believe that you are worth helping, that you have a vital mission in this world, and that you are important to the world and to others. Peterson also argues that you're not your own possession to mistreat or punish, but that really your being is tied to the world. And because of that, you have a responsibility and you're obligated to take care of yourself because not doing that will actually cause harm to others. Now in practice, this lesson means taking care of yourself, getting healthier, both physically and mentally, expanding your knowledge and achieving and setting goals for yourself so that you can continue to progress. Really taking care of yourself like someone else you're responsible for taking care of. Reconceptualizing the way of how you view yourself and your moral obligations to treat yourself. Now, the final lesson, lesson number 10 that I learned in 2020 was to pursue what really is meaningful and not expedient. For those of you who follow Jordan Peterson's work, you may be familiar with this principle. This is another rule from his book that I'll put up here again for you. And really for me in 2020, this year, I've really learned to embrace this principle more and to really commit myself also to pursue what really is meaningful and not what is short term and expedient. To go into this a bit more, we all have different appreciations of what is meaningful in our lives. For me, for instance, it's getting into a chosen course and progressing to become a doctor in the future. That is what I consider to be meaningful, at least at this stage in my life. And I'm working towards that. Now, something which would be expedient in my case could be something which is more short term that can provide and can pay the bills and sometimes you can get caught up in the short term window or short term lens of viewing the world and viewing your life. Jordan Peterson argues that in a life where Jordan Peterson states that we find ourselves constantly in a challenge, in a battle to delay gratification of the, sh of the short term and what's expedient to really embrace and commit and follow and pursue what is meaningful in the long term. Now this dynamic can manifest itself, for instance, when instead of doing what you know you should be doing, you unproductively procrastinate, you mess about and you engage in activities which you know have no way of contributing to what you consider to be meaningful and your pursuit of it. To summarize, meaning is a mature replacement for expedience. When you pursue what's expedient, you reject responsibility and you engage in what's short term and you don't really engage in long term planning now, of course, some will argue that long term planning is not necessarily beneficial, but in this rule and this concept that Jordan Peterson brings, he views living a life subject to the feet of pursuing expedient things as the easy way out. So the final lesson that I learned in 2020 that I'll be taking into 2021 is to pursue what is meaningful and not expedient and to commit to that pursuit as well. So those were my 10 live lessons that I learned in 2020. This was a different video to the ones I typically do. If you like this video, then please consider subscribing and sharing. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm Diego and it's been a pleasure to have you here. See you on the next one.